The first transplant ever performed at Baylor started with a phone call, a highly unusual phone call. It was late afternoon on December 22, 1984. Dr. Thomas Starzl, a pioneer in liver transplantation, was on the line from Pittsburgh. He had apparently received a call from Nancy Reagan, who uh, was interested in this little girl named uh, Amy Garrison, because she had lit the Christmas tree at the White House. And Nancy Reagan asked Tom Starzl to do this transplant on this little girl who was dying of liver failure. I was getting a lot of weird phone calls, uh, <laughs> so nothing really surprised me uh, at that point. At that moment, the uh, program in Pittsburgh was the only liver transplant program in the United States, uh, and only one of uh, 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 five in the world. Our hospitals were filled. We had no uh, uh, intensive care unit beds. One problem was is that we had never done a transplant before at Baylor. Baylor's own transplant program under Dr. Starzl's guidance was still in the planning stages, but the young Swedish surgeon who had been chosen to head it up was visiting from Stockholm, making preparations to launch the Baylor program the following spring. Friday I was wrapping up the, the, the planning and I was about to leave that afternoon and I was in Boone's office. Within minutes of hanging up, we had uh, essentially the entire senior Baylor medical leadership in Boone's office. Everybody except Boone. I got back and my office was full of physicians and they said Dr. Starzl said he has a young girl he wants to bring to Baylor and do a transplant on her. And I thought, well, that's interesting. There was a good deal, deal of controversy about whether we should do this or not. Uh, some people felt that we definitely should. Um, and others felt that we shouldn't. This was high risk, high risk case. Is this really how we want to start out the transplant program? And there was a lot of trepidation, but if we don't ex do this and step up to the plate, uh, it will not be good for our relationship with Tom. And he's supporting us and he thinks that we can do this, so we, we should go ahead. We said, let's take, let's take care of the little girl. That decision set in motion a drama on an epic scale. Within six hours, five-year-old Amy Garrison was in surgery at Baylor. Amy and her family had to come from Indiana. Tom was bringing himself and four other surgeons, I think, uh, from the University of Pittsburgh. The organ was coming from Canada. And Gorin had traveled 5,000 miles already, and he was here. But it was urgent that it be done that night because she was apparently going to die right away if it wasn't done. I added that up once and counted up that it was 14,000 man miles that were traveled one way to pull that off. I remember we uh, arrived, the ambulance was there, we were streaking through the city, and I hadn't had anything to eat <laughs> for a long time. I saw a donut shop, said, stop, stop, <laughs> we've had to get some donuts. Five-year-old Amy Garrison is in serious but stable condition today following an eight-and-a-half-hour surgery to replace her damaged liver. Doctors are pleased with her progress, and she's expected to make a full recovery. The transplant went smoothly, and the new liver began to function immediately. Amy recovered quickly. Toward the end of the first week, her dad told me that she was hungry for SpaghettiOs, and we didn't have any in the dietary department. So her dad and I got in the car on a Friday night and went to about four super, supermarkets till we finally found what she wanted and prepared them for her. And she just, she did very, very well. As to what it meant for Baylor, I think it meant everything. The success of the transplant program resonated throughout the Baylor system. It certainly elevated the internal medicine department and I think every department in the hospital, the pathology department, the radiology department and all, uh, greatly benefited and greatly appreciated uh, the fact that we, were, that we were gonna have and then did have such a fine organ transplant program. Scientific research has always been part of the core mission of the Baylor Regional Transplant Institute's program. The paradigm I gave to everybody when we talked about this was if we organize the whole program to produce science, we will get superb patient care automatically. From day one, everything we did was organized, logical, and reproducible. 
and we collect the data automatically. We have a database that is actually begins with Amy Garrison and goes forward to this day and his perspective is real time. It has a very substantial organization around it to collect and massage this data. And it's sort of why I believe we have been able to contribute so much as we have been able to. This being a non-medical school, and we have hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of presentations and publications. The Baylor program was not only saving lives in Dallas, but also exporting its hard-earned experience and expertise throughout the world. More than 35 fellows have been trained in transplant surgery at Baylor, and many are now directing their own transplant programs throughout the country and internationally. Dr. Marlon Levy developed Baylor transplant programs in Grapevine and later Fort Worth and continues to conduct groundbreaking research with the potential to transform the treatment of type 1 diabetes. The diabetic, specifically the type 1 diabetic, is a person whose islet cells are no longer working, so they make no insulin. What we do with an islet transplant is we, we take the, the islets from an organ donor, we transplant them or infuse them into a diabetic patient. The goal of that approach is that uh, after, the, after the cell transplant, they'll have the cells to, to make insulin, and they'll be making their own insulin. Since 1978, when Dr. Roy Calm pioneered the use of cyclosporin to overcome organ rejection, transplantation has steadily grown as an ever more effective and accessible option for a wide variety of patients. Baylor remains a leader in the field. The expertise developed by the Baylor Transplant Program continues to be disseminated to the next generation of transplant surgeons through the textbook co-written by Dr. Clint Malm with Dr. Ronald Busatil. One of the good things about looking back is to see how far one has come. The clinical impact that a, a program like this has all through your organization, all through your medical staff is just almost immeasurable and it uh, helped elevate Baylor to another level in many areas. Uh, Gorin has gone from a revolutionary con concept to something that is just normal in medicine. What happened in Baylor was pretty fantastic. Where will transplantation go in the future? I do believe that the science will bring us in two directions. One of them is direction where we can actually correct whatever disease the patient is suffering from by gene therapy and stem cells. And those in whom we can't, I think transplantation will develop organs and if not that alone, at least a, a treatment for the immune system that would make transplantation vastly more safe. 25 years ago, Baylor's leadership had the vision, the courage, and the faith to take a bold step into the future. Please join us in celebrating a quarter century of success and affirming our commitment to a future of vision, philanthropy, and leadership.